I have a thin section here of a porphyritic rock from Reunion Island. Uh, some of the minerals in here are considered aphanitic, so I thought it would be a really good uh, slide to show and a demonstration. I want to show this today because of some of the more professional applications and to see how this can be used. Some of the questions we've been getting is, is basically how does this fare up and match up to, a, let's say, a Carl Zeiss petrographic microscope. So what you're looking at on screen now is something that's at 5x magnification. It's in polarized light and it's in plain light. And you can see that we can still rotate the stage and we can remove and insert the analyzer. 5x of optical magnification is about 20x magnification when you factor in the resolution of the camera sensor uh, that we're using today. So if I want to polarize the thin section, all I need to do is basically screw in this polarizer, which I can then twist um, 90 degrees to the other polarizer that's beneath the sample to basically reveal the subject in plain light. I can also rotate the analyzer which is on the petrographic analyzer itself. It's really nice and handy having this live view function for the fact that you can uh, move the slide around and view it in plain and polarized light uh, but you can also observe everything in context. You never really lose where you are. I can just basically move the base to find my center of rotation and, and, and spin the uh, the stage to look at things such as pleochroism and, and document the extinction angles. When I'm ready to take a picture, what I'll do is I'll move the camera relative to the sample and I'll choose a starting point and an end point so that I can take multiple images through the specimen. In this case, we're going to take 25 individual photographs. So you can see here that this is the live view. What I'll do is I'll pull the sample uh, all the way forward so that I'm focused on the back of the sample and then I'll push it uh, so that I'm focused on the front of the sample. Once I have those parameters set, what I'll do is I'll open up a quick preview function and I'm going to go through and I'm going to capture all of these images uh, in a designated folder, which I'm going to select. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to capture 25 images through the sample. So you can see the focal plane moving. You can even see some gunk there on the screen. So once I'm done doing that, what I'll do is I'll open up the software that we're going to use to stack these images. In this case, it'll be Zerene Stacker. I'm going to select my folder and I'm going to drag it to the input files section of this program. From here what I'll do is I'll go to stack and, go, and I'm going to stack this uh, in Pmax and what that's going to do is it's going to take the individual focal plane from each of the 25 images that we just captured and it's going to stitch them together to render an image on the right that's completely in focus. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just pause it here and I'll basically move around. You can see that at hundred percent there's no loss in clarity or resolution in the image, and we're not even finished processing this image yet. You can even make out crystals that would that are considered aphanitic. They're very, very fine-grained. In fact, I'm going to show you how to measure these individual crystals uh, the moment that this software has finished processing. So I'll save this output image. Uh, I'll just save it as a JPEG for now for demonstrative purposes. And then I'm going to open it um, from the folder, and I'm going to open it up in, in, uh, in Photoshop for you. Let this load a second. So I've also got these preset scale bars that I've gone ahead and made uh, that are formatted to the particular lens that we're using, which is a MPP 65 1-5X. These are also available on our website under the download section if you do or are using this lens. Uh, I want a white scale bar because the contrast is going to be a little bit better. And because I used a, a larger camera sensor, this is 51 megapixels as opposed to the 21 that we normally use. It's actually This is actually a good demonstration to show you the difference in, in sensor size. That initial square was the 21 megapixel zone. This is now at 51. So that scale bar is exactly one millimeter uh, across the slide. And what I can do now is I'll show you how to convert this into a completely measurable image using that scale bar. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to analysis and you're going to set a custom uh, measurement scale and we're going to use uh, units that are in millimeters. So I know my pixel length. I just use the ruler tool to image how many pixels are along that line of one millimeter. And then I'm going to change the units so that those amount of pixels represent one millimeter on the image. And then I'll name it um, <coughs> because this is the 5DSR. I'll just call it the MPE65 uh, millimeter with uh, the 5DSR camera sensor, and then I'll go ahead and I'll save this. So uh, once that this is finally finished saving, what I can do is I can go back to that ruler ruler tool, and I can select any area of the image, drag it, and I can go up top to the L1, and that's my distance in millimeters. 
So you, I can even take one of these really, really fine grains of plagioclase or pyroxene, um, and I can measure the, the length and the width of those crystals, even though we've only shot this at 5x. What you're looking at is something closer to 2040x, which is really beyond the limit of what you would really need in the first place, unless you're looking at very fine grain particles. But again, I can just basically drag my ruler tool across the length of the width of one of these crystals, and you can see up here that it's represented, it's only, it's only two, uh, 20 microns in length. Uh, so we're getting some, some very, very close scales uh, and very good resolution just with the camera that we're using here today. I also want to tell you that this analyzer isn't just to be used for petrographic uh, analysis. You can also use just standard biological slides. I've got some slides here that were sent to me from the Yale uh, University Peabody Natural History Museum, and I can just pop this on the analyzer, and I'll be able to look at anything from biological tissues, from uh, genitalia, from other things like that. Uh, the same way I would in a microscope. So this box, you can really place this directly underneath uh, your standard dissecting scope and you'll be able to see some, some pretty clear information uh, just from using this. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for listening to this. And if you'd like to support the Kickstarter campaign for this analyzer, please click on the link below and, and take a look at it. Thank you very much for listening.